Welcome to Fight News Now Extra. I'm John Pollock. We're getting you set for the weekend with John Ramdean and Robin Black joining me to chat UFC 185. We're going to hear from some of the fighters on the main card, and we'll also give you the latest on the health of Mark the Hammer Coleman. Anthony Pettis will defend his title for the second time on Saturday night at UFC 185 as he meets Rafael dos Anjos. The Brazilian has won eight of his last nine fights and earned the title fight with his latest victory over Nate Diaz this past December. Pettis spoke to MMAfighting.com ahead of the fight to break down his opponent and he is not overlooking the challenger. I think this, this guy here is going to test me. I mean, I know he's going to come out ready to go five rounds and he has a skill set to uh, strike with me to be in the ground with me so I think this is the kind of fight I need this is what the fans need to see to see how good I really got I mean the Melendez fight you can kind of base it a little bit I had a year off I was a little nervous going out there so I mean seven minutes is hard to tell how good I really got I think this guy's gonna push me and make me uh, perform to my highest level Roy Nelson heads into Dallas on Saturday night having lost three of his last four fights as he prepares for Alistair over him Nelson's last win came under a year ago over Antonio Rodrigo Noguera he spoke with Ariel Hawani of MMAfighting.com about this pivotal heavyweight fight for the 38-year-old. You know, I'm just going one step forward. You know, I that the only thing that I, I think about the my last fight was just that I was literally one fight away from fighting for the belt. Yeah. That was about it. I I see the fight being all over the place. Like I mean, it's a fight that could be you know striking to on the ground, but you know at the end of the day, I just want my hand raised. And finally, we end off with some sad news regarding former UFC heavyweight champion Mark Coleman. Earlier this week, he underwent hip surgery with doctors discovering an enormous infection in his leg and feared that they would have to amputate the leg. Coleman is now facing another major surgery and is attempting to raise funds at GoFundMe.com slash Save the Hammer. His longtime friend Wes Sims spoke to us regarding the condition of Coleman. Here about a week ago, he was really, really, really sick. Everyone was getting the flu and Mark came down with a horrible flu um he was very sick his girlfriend told me that he was starting to even turn gray so they took him to the hospital he had a bad infection in him they put him on antibiotics for about four days he got out the surgeon with his hip told him that they would go back in they would replace the hip with a bigger ball so it wouldn't pop out anymore so monday he went in to have the surgery when they cut him open his whole leg was infected his whole leg had infection all the way down it he is very messed up right now so they are treating the infection they're, they're trying to get it under control and they told him about six to eight weeks they can go back in again and do the proper surgery and put a hip replacement in we look ahead to this saturday night and the fight network will be presenting our ufc 185 preview show at 7 p.m eastern including ufc lightweight champion anthony pettis joining us on the program and then immediately after the main event tune right back here to fight network for our live post show with full analysis of all of the fights and the post fight press conference here with John Ramdean and Robin Black going into the weekend. Uh, but before we discuss the card on Saturday night, we just heard from Wes Sims there, obviously a longtime friend and training partner of Mark Coleman's who's in a really bad shape right now. He is trying to raise his uh, funds at GoFundMe.com slash Save the Hammer. He's facing a major surgery, probably another one for his other hip down the road. It's a guy that has basically given his entire body to the sport, literally, and is completely broken down at this point. It's a very sad story when you hear about a guy who has no income coming his way and just a mess health-wise right now. Yeah, what's unfortunate is, yes, Mark Coleman is the face because, you know, people that have followed mixed martial arts are no holds barred for a long time. They know Mark Coleman, but he's one example of many athletes that dedicated their lives to this sport and are in the same situation. Mark Coleman happens to have one of those names, so guys like Mark, Mark Hunt sent 5000 bucks his way to help him out. I think uh, the UFC has also got to step in. they got to say, you know what? If it wasn't for guys like Mark Coleman, we wouldn't be here making o oodles and oodles of money today. So they should step in and, and try to help this guy out as well. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a scary thing. Every time you get reminded uh, that this is a really painful and damaging and dangerous thing that we watch and consume and talk about on TV and whatever we do. Every time we're in the venue for the smallest show in the world or the biggest show, I'm always so excited. Like I'm wearing a, a, I'm dressed up and I just can't wait. It's fight night. Every fight night's great. And then there's that same moment every single time and I always forget about it. And those guys open up that thing and they wheel that stretcher in and they wheel that thing in beside the ring or the cage. 
and every time it, it, it surprises me, and every time I remember myself being carried out on one, and I think about just how dangerous this thing is, but it's a beautiful thing. These men dedicate their lives to it, but we have to find ways to take care of them, because it's, their, it's Mark Coleman's choice to spend a lifetime enjoying doing what he loves and entertaining all these people, but let's just not forget about him after it's done. Yeah, and I think this is also something that, I mean, we look at at least the UFC only operating in 1993 and where other sports were when it came to free agency and where it came to unions. And I think that this sport is screaming union at some point where these guys can get together and get things such as pensions for a lot mm -hmm. of these fighters because these are guys that you, you are dedicating your entire life to becoming the top fighter in the world. And that doesn't always mean you can have side businesses going and diverting your attention to that way. And later on in life, you are going to need something when you're contributing so much. So I really hope that this is getting the ball rolling where some of these fighters are going to look at examples like Mark Coleman and say, hey, we're giving everything we have to this sport and where am I going to be at 50 years of age? So I, I think that with all the talk about antitrust lawsuits and such, mm -hmm. that unions are a logical way to go down in terms of a path for some of these guys. Let's chat a bit about UFC 185. We heard from Anthony Pettis and Roy Nelson uh, off the top there from MMAfighting.com. Let's chat about Roy Nelson. Him and Alistair Overeem are in this really <laughs> oh unique division where two wins can get you a title fight and no amount of losses, I think, will lead to any of these guys being cut. I think these guys have job security. They are going to go out there. It's heavyweights, which generally garner a lot of interest from people and these are two guys that I think as long as they want to keep fighting they're going to have spots in that heavyweight division. Yeah, Alistair Overeem and Roy Nelson this is what mixed martial arts was built on guys that have star power it's irrelevant whether they have wins or losses and how many consistently uh, in a row the fact is that we know that Overeem and Big Country they come out to fight hard every single time they come out to put on a show, and that's what mixed martial arts is all about. They're rare animals, these guys, because the elite of the elite in athletics, uh, elite athletes at heavyweight, play football. Because you can get rich in football. You can make a lot of money, buy your mama a house, marry a supermodel. Football leads to that. Fighting leads to, you know, lonely lives and Mark Coleman. I mean, that's what it can lead to. So to have two enormous men in this very rare air and fight at this stage of their life, this is the perfect time for both these guys to fight. And I'm, you forget because the card is so good, but I'm pumped to see these two men share a cage. It's going to be happening Saturday night, UFC 185, and be sure to tune into our preview show Saturday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, where UFC lightweight champion Anthony Pettis will be joining us just prior to his fight with Rafael Dos Anjos. That's Saturday night, 7 Eastern, right here on Fight Network. But right now, we are sending you to more of Fight News Now Extra.